Sinisterism is about finding the primal aspects of the left-hand path, primal in history, primal in the psyche, thus obtaining truth. Thomas Leroy Greetings, my friends, and welcome back to your dose of sinister heathenry. But for those new to the channel, I'm Thomas Leroy, founder of the international left-hand path organization, The Sect of the Horn God. The Sect is an educational foundation created to not only make those with the black flame aware of its glow, but to also restore the shadow aspects to the ancient gods by going deep into the past, not only historically, but also psychologically for the primordial depths of the psyche are limitless. So, if this sounds interesting, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to learn more, join the organization, the Sect of the Horn God, at the link down below. Thank you. If you want the truth, go to the source. I've said this countless times. And for us who delve into the mysteries, the clandestine, the esoteric, and, and we want truth, we should go to the ancients. Lucky for us, the primal wisdom is still out there. Many of those ancient cultures still exist. And being able to obtain wisdom from them is like being able to question our grandparents or even our great-grandparents, as, as long as they aren't senile, if you know what I mean. You're not getting watered-down second-hand information. Think about it. Why, why utilize modernity's bastardized data when you can go to the source to access the sacred? Now, even though I'm not a member of these still existing ancient cultures, I, I come at this as someone who has a respectful interest, for they are our elders, and I believe one should have respect for their elders. I'm traditional in that way. And what I've come to discover delving into these sacred traditions, they're not all about love and light. There is a darkness, a profound darkness. So what we're going to do in this video is return to the topic of dark shamanism and its different aspects, starting with not always purely diabolical. They, they can at times be the anti-heroes of shamanism, they who overcome negative deeds and consequences by pitting might against might, utilizing the black spirits as agents of vengeance. They are the sinister counterpart to traditional Mongolian and Siberian shamanism. And they also exist in different forms within all animistic societies. They are the black shamans. Black shamanism is a term that reflects a complex and an often misunderstood aspect of shamanic practices. It refers to the use of shamanic knowledge, rituals, and malevolent spiritual powers for personal gain and not always for the greater good. While shamanism is traditionally associated with healing, protection, and spiritual guidance, black shamanism highlights the darker and moral, morally questionable aspects that can exist within shamanic traditions. For instance, instead of attempting to reach the highest of the three planes of existence, 
black shamans connect with our plane, the carnal, and the lower plane or the underworld. Thus they depart from the ethical principles and intentions typically associated with shamanic practices. While traditional shamans serve as mediators between the human world and the world of spirit, using their abilities for the positive, black shamans often use, utilize their powers for selfish or harmful purposes, such as inflicting curses, manipulating dark energies, or causing illness or misfortune to others. Their motivation can vary widely and may include personal and vendettas, desires for power or control, or attempts to seek vengeance or retribution. Now, it's important to note that the term black shamanism is subjective because what's considered evil within, within one cultural context may not be viewed the same way in another. Additionally, the actions of individual practitioners don't necessarily reflect the beliefs or practices of, of the broader shamanic community, which often emphasizes healing and spiritual growth. In many cases, those who engage in black shamanism may be seen as deviating from the ethical guidelines and responsibilities expected of them. Black shamanism highlights the potential for ethical challenges, spiritual imbalance, and misuse of spiritual knowledge and abilities within shamanic traditions. Addressing these complexities requires a nuanced understanding of cultural beliefs, ethical frameworks, and the diverse expressions of shamanic practices with different cultures. In Navajo culture, for example, there are stories of black or dark shamans or medicine men who wield harmful supernatural powers. These figures are often portrayed as villains who use their knowledge of witchcraft and dark magic to harm others. These are the Navajo skinwalkers. It is said that when a witch travels at night, he will wear the skin of a dead animal to transform into that animal. And it's whispered by some that these skinwalkers hold nighttime gatherings where they wear nothing but a mask sitting among corpses while sometimes partaking in a bit of necrophilia. Tradition has it that skinwalkers come about when a shaman abuses indigenous magic for evil. He is then given mythical powers that, that vary according to different folk tales, but one thing they all have in common is the ability to turn into or possess an animal or person. Skinwalkers are figures deeply rooted in Navajo mythology and cultural beliefs, representing a complex and often feared aspect of Navajo spiritual traditions. The concept of skinwalkers is shrouded in mystery and secrecy, as their existence is considered taboo and not, not openly discussed. However, understanding the folklore and legend surrounding skinwalkers provides insights into Navajo cosmology, spiritual beliefs, and cultural practices. Skinwalkers are believed to be individuals who possess supernatural abilities, including the power to shapeshift into animals, control elements of nature, and cast spells or curses. They're often associated with malevolent intention using their powers for harm or personal gain. In Navajo tradition, the, the method of becoming a skinwalker is considered taboo and associated with witchcraft or dark magic. This is because one must undergo rituals and ceremonies that involve forbidden acts such as killing a close relative or violating cultural taboos. 
This process is said to corrupt the individual soul, leading to a life of darkness and spiritual imbalance. Skinwalkers are often depicted as dangerous and malevolent beings who use their power to inflict harm on others, such as causing illnesses, misfortune, or death. They're said to possess knowledge of ancient spells and rituals that enabled them to manipulate natural forces and influence events in the physical and spiritual realms. Encounters with skinwalkers have been described in Navajo oral traditions and folklore with stories of eerie encounters, strange occurrences, and unexplained phenomena attributed to these supernatural beings. The subject of skinwalkers is not often shared with outsiders, and there is a sense of reverence and fear surrounding these mythical beings. In contemporary time, the concept of skinwalkers has also entered popular culture with depictions in literature, film, and media. However, it's, it's important to recognize that these portrayals may not accurately reflect the depth and complexity of Navajo beliefs and traditions regarding skinwalkers. These dark shamans represent a dark aspect of Navajo mythology and spirituality. They embody themes of power, taboo, darkness, and the supernatural, offering insight into Navajo cosmology, cultural values, and spiritual beliefs. But if you're going to attempt to get a better understanding of Navajo traditions, don't be an idiot. Try to understand the societal nuances and recognize the deep-rooted significant significance of these mythical beings within a culture that still exists the Navajo. There are, though, other dark shamanic practitioners who also wear the skins of animals to acquire their essence, but they're from a culture that no longer exists. Even though some of you Odinists may argue with me over this, but there are no true practitioners of Norse heathenry still around to ask about the dark shamanic aspects of the berserkers and Ufinar. So instead of going to the source, we'll have to rely on historical data and delving into the Similarities between the skinwalkers and berserkers was just something I couldn't resist. Even though their two respective cultures share no common root, the similarities between the skinwalkers and berserkers must say something about the innate qualities of the greater human psyche. Now, some might be wondering, Berserkers are warriors. What do they have to do with shamans? While berserkers and Ufanar are portrayed as fierce warriors in popular culture, some interpretations suggest a deeper shamanic aspect to their identity. Now, just in case some of you don't know, Berserkers and Ulfinar are warriors and shamans from ancient Norse society, hailing primarily from Scandinavia during the Viking Age. Where berserkers have been connected to bears, Ulfinar, on the other hand, translates to wolf skins, indicating their association with wolves, while emulating the ferocity and cunning of the animals. Shamanism was a prominent aspect of many ancient cultures, including Norse society, and the idea of berserkers as Norse shamans stems from their reported abilities to enter a, a state of trance or frenzy during battle. This state was not merely a display of rage, but was often interpreted as a form of ecstatic experience akin to shamanic rituals where the practitioner transcends ordinary consciousness to 
connect with the spiritual forces. Some scholars suggest that berserkers may have undergone shamanic practices to achieve their heightened states of consciousness. These practices included rituals, chanting, drumming, and it is possible the consumption of psychoactive substances like hallucinogenic mushrooms or herbal concoctions to induce altered states of consciousness. They were said to howl like wild animals, bite their shields, and fight with reckless abandon, ignoring pain and injury. This behavior instilled fear in their enemies and contributed to their reputation as formidable warriors. In Norse mythology, berserkers were sometimes associated with Odin, the dark god of war, wisdom, and magic. Odin himself was a shamanic figure known for his quest for knowledge, mastery of magic, and ability to travel between worlds. The berserkers' connection to Odin suggests a deeper spiritual dimension to their warrior ethos where their martial skills were intertwined with mystical experiences and divine inspiration. For berserkers in Ufanar, their berserkers' rage could be seen as a form of shamanic journey that transcends the boundaries between the physical and spiritual worlds, tapping into primal energies and channeling them into battle. This transformational experience mirrors the shamanic concept of death and rebirth where the individual undergoes a symbolic death of the ego and emerges transformed, empowered, and connected to cosmic forces. While the exact nature of their shamanic practices is guesswork, their role as potential Norse shamans adds depth to their portrayal in history and mythology. It highlights the nature of Norse spirituality where warriors could also be spiritual seekers and channelers of divine energy on a quest for transcendence. In conclusion, my friends, as we have learned, there is a dark side to shamanism, something you're not going to hear from the online bullshit shamans. To them, it's all about love and light, and those who preach love and light preach weakness. They don't, they don't want to empower you. They want to drag you down to their insecure, pathetic level. Step into the darkness and learn the truth. You'll be glad you did. Until next time.